Hey guys, this is Hell Hades. This is going to be another raid Shadow Legends video. Guys, we're going to do a guide today on one of the best and most sought after epics in the game. Um, someone that is the absolute dungeon carry uh, in terms of damage. Probably the highest damage outputting epic in the whole game. Um, I've said it. Royal Guard. How do I not have a guide on this champion, you ask? I don't even know. I've done plenty of videos where he's kind of featured and, and done some cool parts of it. So I figured let's get a proper guide on him. Now, Royal Guard is stat hungry. He's actually quite a difficult champion to build, especially if you're earlier game, which means that he becomes like obscenely good late game. But earlier game, he's actually quite difficult to use. So his A1 has got a big boy decrease defense ability on it. 50% um, chance to land it. Um, can book it up to 65% chance. Depends what you're using him for. So if you're using him to place this, then I suggest you book this out. If you've already got an AoE decrease defense champion going before him, which I think is what you should do, by the way, then you can kind of forget about books here um, because it's not going to add too much difference to you. Most of his kit is useful, but some of his kit, you need to decide whether you're going to use him for that or not. So if you're not using him for decreased defense, kind of you don't need to make sure books all land here. It's quite a nice to have, though. He will not do his A2 until decreased defense is on. So if you're not going in with another decreased defense champion, you really want to book this up because it's going to slow you down to get into his main signature move if decreased defense is not on the enemy. I would suggest always having someone else in your team that places decreased defense before he goes. Um, he's got an A2 then. This is what he's all about. Attacks all enemies. AoE ability. Damage increases according to the enemy max HP. Basically, the higher the levels you go, the more HP your opponents have, the harder he hits. And he slams bosses hard. This does not scale with the clan boss. The clan boss will always do like a, a reasonable hit, nothing crazy, which makes him an okay clan boss champion very early game, pretty bad clan boss champion late game, uh, even like mid game, pretty bad. Decrease defense is okay for clan boss. Um, this ability hits okay, but not crazy on clan boss. And sp decrease speed does not land on clan boss. And decrease um, turn meter also doesn't work on clan boss. So. He's not really a clan boss champion. He's an out and out dungeon champion. He will help you nuke through faction wars. Um, and that's his two best spots, really. For the arena, he's just average. So his A3 then, we just touched on it. Four hitter. Four hitter means that he can do a bit of work for you on finites. 60% um, chance. When you book it, 75% chance of placing decreased speed on the hits. So each hit's got that. You've got four random hits. Each time it's got that chance to place a decreased speed. It's actually really good. Um, each hit also, when booked, 75% chance of decreasing target's turn meter by 25%. Lots going on there. Very good ability. Cool for dungeon waves. Cool for boss fights. Uh, especially cool on something like Fire Knights when this goes off when the shield's already down. Because he's basically going to deplete the, uh, the Fire Knights turn meter by about 75% on average. Um, so yeah, cool ability, but you do need accuracy to land this. So as I said earlier, there's kind of two ways you can build him and he is stat hungry. As a base champion, he has got pretty weak base stats apart from attack. Very slow, uh, weak base HP, weak, very weak base defense. And he doesn't have any kind of inbuilt accuracy. So in order to build him to do all of his skills, you need your accuracy up. Accuracy is times 10 whatever level of dungeon you're fighting. So if you're fighting level 20, you want a minimum 200 accuracy. Okay. Um, so already that's a big ask if you haven't got a big great haul. You need his speed up to be relevant. You want him slower than your decreased defense champion, but fast enough to cycle through his abilities. Uh, I'd say a well-built Royal Guard should have at least 170 speed. Um, you want crit rate to be 100% for majority of content. If you're just running him in a specific dungeon and he is the, the powerful affinity, so if he's fighting against um, level 20 spider, for example, where you're against um, spirit affinity, he actually gains naturally 15% more crit rate. So you can build him with 85% crit rate 
just in that scenario. But as soon as you go into another dungeon, it means that you've got a chance for not, not critting. And you always want to be critting with this guy. So ideally, you build him 100% crit rate. You want to make sure that he stays alive. Now, his defense is never going to be enough to keep him alive. Which means you need to avoid him being targeted. Which means you need high HP. So most people will build him 100% crit rate, high crit damage, high HP, reasonable speed, reasonable accuracy. If you want to build him just to nuke, just for that A2 nuke damage, you forget the accuracy and you build more crit damage. That's, that's the way you want to do it. So this is how I would build him if I was like mid game to mid to early game build first. And then I'll show you like a super end game build after that. So mid to end game, I want to be going HP on my ring with ideally HP rolls alongside it like this. So that one is my best one. So I've got 6% there. Or did I have one there? No, 5% there. They're both the same basically. But see that I'm looking for that chunk of HP out of the ring. I want crit damage on the amulet because I'm going to be going 100% crit rate on the build. So you want as much crit damage as you can get out of your amulet. Ideally with accuracy as well. So like if one of these two, like this one's got accuracy on it. If I rolled that one up to eight and it rolled double accuracy, I would probably personally take that up to 16. Uh, it's rolled once. I'm obviously totally short on silver right now, so I'm not going to properly go through with this. But you can see I rolled it twice. Damn, that's actually really good. So that would give me 30 more accuracy, which makes get into the accuracy number that I need much easier. So I'm going to stick with this one actually for the early to mid game type of build. Yeah, I pulled accuracy out of this, which means that I need less accuracy elsewhere. I would then take an accuracy banner, ideally with speed on it. So, you know, we've got an accuracy banner here with 10 speed and a bit of HP. This is kind of like an early uh, a mid game build. So HP, crit damage, accuracy with speed ideally so we started to fill up some of the gaps you then the first thing i would do here is take an hp chest hp on the chest ideally with some crit damage and some speed on it um now good sets for him would be crit rate sets to get your crit rate up it would be cruel sets to get your attack up and to ignore some defense it would be speed sets to get your speed up because he's going to be slow because um, his base speed is so low and it's going to be things like accuracy sets to get his accuracy up for mid to, to kind of um, mid game area late game will show you a different type of build so it looks like out of these this piece is pretty strong with a bunch of crit damage on it and some speed so we take that uh, we then want to take some boots with speed as the main stat and crit damage as an offset Ideally, perhaps with some accuracy on it as well, would be good. Now, with someone like a Royal Guard, stats are better than sets. Stats beat sets. So if I've got this stun pair of boots with the right amount of speed on, and some accuracy and some crit damage and some HP, or these boots here, it doesn't mean I'm building out a stun set. Chances are I will not build a stun set. But I will build items with the right rolls. So this... Probably looks better. Maybe I'll just take that extra accuracy there. So speed with accuracy on it and crit damage is a really nice way to roll him up. We're going to take some crit rate gloves. This is again a mid game build. If I was going late game build, I'm going crit damage gloves. I'll show you that after. But early game, we're going crit rate. I want speed on it and ideally crit damage. Crit rate maxed out speed and crit damage i'll take all of those stats and now i'm starting to look at what do i need now so i've got enough accuracy already i've got 80 percent crit rate so i need another 20. i need a bit more speed ideally i want a bit more attack and i want a bit more hp now i'm naturally going to get the hp from the helm so we're going to go speed crit rate crit damage from the helm in a speed set would be nice in an attack set would be nice because i start to marry out some sets I've got a lot of speed on this one, which is really helpful. This is generally a good piece. Uh, these sets are really good on him here. Cruel set, and that's actually a crazy good piece. Most of the crit rate I need, some speed, some crit damage. Perception is actually a really good set on him as well, because it gives us accuracy and speed together, 
it becomes like a top tier set for him if you're trying to do this kind of mid game build. So I think that's actually the one I'm going to go for. I'm going to try and match that one up. And then in terms of the weapon and the shield, I want to try and get now a second piece of perception. Might have to take it off someone who's already wearing something. And I go for like the absolute best is in terms of the free stats that I want. If I cannot get the absolute best, then I'll I'll start reducing one stat at a time. So speed, attack, crit, crit damage, all stats that I need. So we're going to steal that from Grizzled. And then again, I just have a quick check in. Where am I? 190 speed. I don't need any more speed than that. He's already way quick enough. Accuracy's banging perfect. I want that extra 5% crit rate. So now I just want crit rate and crit damage. I've got enough health now so that he's not going to be the target. Um, because I'll run a tank with less health than this. So I just want as much extra crit damage as I, as I can get. And ideally I want it in uh, no speed, don't need speed. I want it in either speed set or an attack set. Ideally the attack set just so I get a benefit from that attack chest. So we've got one here. It's actually got speed on it anyway. It's got the 5% crit rate that I need. And we end up with a build that's got 200 speed. 100 crit rate, 185 crit damage, 267 accuracy, 36 and a half K on the um, on the health. So this is pretty much the build. Now you can go one or two ways here for um, for your royal guards. This is, I'd say, more like a mid game build in terms of damage. You can go into Helm Smasher instead of Flawless Execution. And you'll do more damage, but it's spiky damage rather than consistent damage. So for a Royal Guard, Flawless Execution is actually pretty good because you get the same damage every time. And you'll know if you're doing enough damage to clear waves and stuff like that. And that's, that's his build. So we would be able to take him in in that type of uh, mid-game build. I'm just going to hide my other Royal Guard in the vault. And we'd be able to take him into dungeons. And he's basically going to be our damage. He's still pretty fragile. So you do need to be careful with him still. Let's just get a team together. Okay, I've got the band back together. So we've got high cartoon speed with speed lead. Uh, I've got decreased defense coming from Tyrell. I've got Silar just to kind of mess stuff up. So she's got stun set on and some control. Uh, and then we've got frozen banshee to do poison work on the dragon. Now, You'll see that my HP here of my Royal Guard was 36,772. I've made sure that Tayrail has got more HP. Oh, sorry, less HP, but a lot more defense. So the mobs are going to come after Tayrail, not after my Royal Guard. This is what you want to do. A tank with low HP, high defense. Um, Tayrail is also faster than my Royal Guard. That's really important. Uh, and then we've got everyone else just kind of built there to do a bit of control, a bit of speed, and a bit of boss damage. So we're going to slow it down just for seeing that first Royal Guard slam. Decrease defense goes on. Royal Guard comes in and bam. Because decrease defense was on, he comes in with his big hit. And then we get some control coming out from my Silar. Everyone else doing their job. We've got the three, four hitter, sorry. Decrease speed gone on two of them. Uh, dropped a bunch of their turn meter as well. So that's good control for waves. And we should be able to get through this pretty comfortably with the stun set going off as well it just makes it all the more easy another big nuke comes in now if i was doing this like just like myself i would be cycling around and saving those abilities for now because we're in a little bit of trouble now but we do get decreased speed off from silar and turn meter drop just as a bit of time hopefully we get a stun or two got a couple off that's good we're waiting for decreased defense to come back from Tayrell. And then we're waiting for the Royal Guard Slam to really get the work. There's the decreased defense. Next move will be a Royal Guard Slam. In the meantime, Silas just stunning everything up, which is crazy. There's the takedown. Look, 50 odd Ks across the board. So even some, even a Royal Guard built what I would class as like a mid-game build without crazy damage. Already doing a lot of work on these waves as long as you keep him away from the damage so far we've not taken a single hit i do have people moving quickly which is helping um but if you didn't have people moving quickly you might just want a couple of champions like silar here to do the um 
turn meter stuff or the crowd control. Get to the dragon, and the kind of main benefit here is uh, actually got a resist on the poison, which is annoying. We've got a poisoner here who's going to do damage if she actually gets her stuff away. We've got decreased accuracy here from Sila so that we don't take as many um, debuffs on ourselves. And then Royal Guard pretty much is just doing the slams when he gets it available. And the slams hurt a lot. The slams really do a good work. Here it is. Nice 400 odd K because it does enemy max HP. So 400 K slam even with this type of build. So this is going to end up being like a what two and a half. So probably about a three minute run I'd say to finish it up. I don't have any healers in this team. Um, I do have a bit of life still gear, I think on Frozen Banshee, and I think maybe on Tayrell as well. Another slam comes in, basically 400k again. So between the poisons and the slamming, this dragon's got no chance, and that's going to be job done three minutes. And basically, this same Royal Guard build will work for you in Spider. It will work for you in Fire Knights. It will work for you on Ice Golem. So he's just like a dungeon killer um, with a similar sort of setup. So I'll show you those same type of runs. Uh, this kind of works. Put him in there. Again, you just want to make sure you've got your decreased defense going off. Raw God can kill himself in this dungeon pretty easily on wave two. See that big old hits. Creela doing work as well. Wave two is the problem. So we get a decreased defense off nice and early. And when these guys shriek, we could be in trouble. Depends where we get these ally attacks. Kind of nice it's gone there because we want him to die. It you really want to rotate back round to this slam before the shrieks come off. Because that slam there, if it's after the shrieks, you're probably dead. See how much damage he's taken there in one hit? I mean, he's, he's really taking some pain. Killing himself. Don't kill yourself, Royal Guard. And that's, that's the biggest risk. Obviously, I've got uh, Apothecary in this run because he will help keep people alive. Get through to the boss then. And he is a risk in this dungeon. So he will do his slam whenever it's available now. They changed his AI. In one way, that's good because you kill the boss a lot faster. In another way, it's really dangerous because you, you force the retribution hits. There it is. Retribution hit. Okay, we got through it this time. We need to kill another one of these adds or we're going to die, basically. So you have to control your damage in this dungeon. Um, and you have to have enough kind of support and healing going on to keep people alive otherwise he'll put you in trouble you can see it here you're, you're actually much better off bringing in like a revived style champion i mean he's definitely dead here he's 100 percent dead i think there he goes yeah so he's now out of the game he's already actually done a ton of work by this point and hopefully the team will finish it off but you can see that he's a bit of a risk because he can actually trigger two retribution hits, which is a complete wipe. So just be aware on this dungeon. So let's move on to Spider. Now in Spider Comp, he is brilliant. He's one of the best. Um, but again, if you're running something like an HP burn strat, just be aware because he will do more damage than you need for HP burn. So I would suggest you don't run him in an HP burn strat. I'd suggest you run him in kind of like a nuke strat with someone like a miscreated monster. So if you've got a miscreated monster, this kind of setup looks good. And then you have your decreased defense in someone like a Tayrell or a Stag Knight. And you end up running in this sort of comp. Because it's going to take a few of his slams to kill the spider if you're running this kind of mid-game version build. So you do need someone like a Silar to keep their speed at bay. You need your decreased defense to go before your slam. We've got a good old hit there, see that? And we get big shields out because the decreased defense was down early. He's not the target, Coldheart is. It's actually not ideal. I, wouldn't, I prefer for my Tayrell to be the target instead of Coldheart, to be honest, but um, I've obviously not got a built right. But this team, we've got so much control out of Sylar. Sylar is busted good. 
a spider. Literally, uh, I slept on her for a while. She is really, really good on this dungeon. Just loads of turn meter control. And then we're waiting really to cycle back to the big slam again. So cold heart's gone. There's the big slam. Number two, 860k. Got shields coming in again. And pretty much as long as we survive to it, big slam number three is going to be when we win. So. And what you'll find is things like his A3 here start to become really important. So decrease speed and drop turn meter at the same time. You only get one hit on the main spider because the other ones just kind of cycle somewhere else. But they turn, they tend to be really strong. And I think his next one might be his slam. Hopefully. We don't really want the spider getting any sort of reset. Has had a reset actually. Not ideal. And if you get to like proper end game and you're able to get yourself two raw guards, then spider becomes very quick. And I'll show you that when I do the end game build. So you can see here, I mean, perhaps I'll just skip through to the end part. Or oh, we could watch it. We could watch it. Um, but you can see it's kind of just slow and steady. Um, ideally, as I say, I wouldn't be having... Uh, Tayrell should be my tank here. I don't know what I've done with HP on these other two. But Tayrell should be the person tanking everything up. So Coldheart should still be alive. The spider should be dead because of that. I still use two. Uh, I use one Royal Guard in my faction war team, alongside other good champions. Still in it. Still in my, um, still in my like, level twenty one stuff. And even his A one, where he's landing his decreased defense and stuff like that, it's just a good, solid amount of damage. Double hit on the spider that time, so we hit a load of turn meter reduction, which is useful. And this is going to end up being about a three minute run. I think we've got one more turn on the slam. And the last slam will kill it. There it is. Bam. One million. So what did he do? 7.6 million damage versus everyone else doing like a couple of mil. Shows how effective his damage is. Also just clears out the spiderling waves. But he does way more work. On level 20 than he does on level 15 for example because his hits are based on max enemy hp the hp scales high as you get to later levels so the other place then to show you with this free to play not free to play like um mid game build would be finite so let's just go stag and raw guard probably silar again just to keep some more turn meter stuff going on. Pothagary could have come in the front here actually. But again we get a decreased defense off early. I think we didn't have decreased defense on Errol. That's why he didn't do his slam there. I'd have to check that back. But I don't know why he's not slamming. Raw guard why are you not slamming my man? There's the slam. Now he is negative affinity for 20. Which makes him probably quite a poor choice because he is going to be the target if these get a go he's dead basically he's dead which is why you'd rather bring an apothecary instead of lissandra apothecary can tank up the hits instead of raw guard build apothecary high hp uh, sorry low hp high defense i think we might get through it so i've got quite a lot of control here but normally this team like if you're running this team without as much control as i've got then your raw guard would die for sure. He's the only negative affinity guy. So I'm going to run it through to the boss. I'll show you the boss part. Okay, so we get onto the boss. Um, he's got two single hit moves. And in, then the main reason why I like him here is for his A3. So he's doing his A1 now. He's trying to get decreased defense on for me. He's going to keep doing his A1 until decreased defense goes on. See that? Even though his other abilities are ready, he keeps doing his A1 until... He can then land this slam, 273k. It's pretty good damage. His A3 quad hit and um, decreased speed and decreased turn meter. All of that is great for finites. So a quad hit, but his AI is a bit wafty and you just need to be aware of that. Like His AI can throw you out when he's trying to get that decreased defense on and is actually 
shields in the way. Plus, on level 20, 20, you've got weak hit possibilities like that. Weak source 70k is not what you want. So, leading up to 20, I think he's brilliant. You get to level 20, for most people, he's going to sub out again. Um, but still, he is an effective champion in Finite. So, you see that, apart from Cold Heart Henry, he's done the most damage. So, what I'm going to do now is change him into an endgame build. And I use two Royal Guards for the end game. So I'm going to switch his gear out and make him way stronger. If you look at the, the build we've got here, I'm going to strip out his accuracy in my end game teams. I don't need him for the decrease speed and I don't need him for the decrease um, defense. I just use him to slam. So I still want to get the crit rate up. I want way more crit damage. Uh, I want more attack. I don't care so much about HP because I don't expect him to take a hit. I kill stuff before he's going to take a hit. Uh, and I still want OK speed. So I'm going to change it up and then I'll show you what I've done. So you can see here, what I'm trying to do is get his attack up as high as possible, his crit rate and crit damage up really high, and get his speed to a sensible level. So we have gone for attack on the ring, attack percentage with an attack percentage roll with a glyph on the ring, crit damage as high as I can get it on his amulet, and then attack with speed and attack percentage on his uh, banner. So everything here is about pushing damage, damage, damage. We're then going to start with gloves. I always start with gloves here because gloves are where you get your biggest damage return. Crit damage on the gloves, ideally with crit rate as a substat, ideally with speed as a substat as well. Again, stats over sets for a build like this. So yes, I'd prefer it to be in like um, cruel sets and stuff like that, but I just don't have the gear to do it. So speed, crit rate here, very cool. Loads of speed, crit rate, a little bit of attack there. Very nice. A lot of attack percentage coming in here. I think I want this speed. Look, all that speed there. 25 speed is going to help me get to the level I need, plus give me all of that damage. So we're going to take crit damage on the gloves. I'm going to go attack percentage on the chest. Attack percentage with speed and crit rate. If I can do speed, crit rate, and crit damage, I'll do it. But this is quite nice. I'm looking for as much crit rate as I can get. I need to get myself up to 100% crit rate more than I need more crit damage right now. So crit rate is the like the preference skill. 13% on that one. 12% on that one with a good speed roll. So I'm probably going to take this one with the speed roll as well. So we're up to, what, 139 speed. Uh, if I look at my other Royal Guard, I basically want to be about the same speed as my other Royal Guard, who's in the vaults, because I know that he's synced into my teams. So he's running at, uh, what's that, 169 speed. So I don't need a ton more speed, actually. I mean, I'm already kind of close to where I need it to be, which means I might not need speed boots. So I'm going to go for, we'll see if this works, attack percentage on the boots with crit rate and speed. Again, I'm kind of looking for sets that make sense, like um, Cruel Set or maybe Crit Rate Set if I've got good rolls on it to give myself that extra 12% crit rate, or maybe Speed Set to give myself the extra speed. Speed, Crit Rate, Crit Damage. Because we're going to be a bit slow if I don't find them. Uh, I need to be on boots here. So I think this works. Speed, crit rate, crit damage, and it's going to give me a chance to unlock more crit if I set those up. So I need only about another 15 speed. So we're going to keep rolling with those same substats. Speed, crit rate, crit damage. See if I can find something in these three in the crit rate set. So we've got lots of crit rate, speed, crit damage here. I think that's going to be the one. So the crit rate is going to boost me up now because I'm going to get my set bonus as well to 75% crit rate. I only need to be at 85% to deal with Spider 20 and that's where he's going to mainly play. So now on these last ones, I want another 10% crit rate. Crit damage set is good here to boost my crit damage up. Um, and Cruel set is also good to ignore defense. So I'd prefer Cruel set if I can get it. Crit rate, crit damage, speed. Very good. And then on the shield, looking for the same again. Where am I at? Crit rate, I'm at 91. I don't need any more crit rate now. 
I just want speed and crit damage. In fact, my speed is already kind of where I want it to be as well. So it's a nice to have rather than a must have. As much crit damage as I can squeeze out of this build, I will take. We've got 20% here with a bit of speed as well. So it feels like that's going to be the one. So we end up then at 104 crit rate, 293 crit damage, 5.5k attack, low health, pretty low speed, but that's like an end game smack build. You might push more crit damage than I've done here, um, potentially. So you might be looking for, for boots with a bit more crit damage on it, um, but that is going to hit pretty hard. You also might go for Helm Smasher instead of Flawless Execution here. So if we look at what that does in somewhere like Spider, Endgame Spider, and I run something like a Venus, put him as the lead, give me more attack. Venus to drop defense and weaken. We run both Royal Guards. Both Royal Guards for two slams. I run Gurp Tuck to increase my damage when I slam. And I run Bad L to increase my damage uh, when I slam as well. Like this. So this is a comp which is pretty um, crazy endgame. Everything in this is about increasing the damage my Royal Guards can put out on like an auto run. So we go decrease defense and weaken from Venus. We go poison the enemy, poison ourselves, slam one, 2.6 mil, slam two, 2.6 mil. Um, and then I just need the HP burns to finish stuff off. Sometimes it's a straight kill, so that's a 21 second. Sometimes the Royal Guards will do just about enough damage to straight kill the spider. But basically, I get myself a 20 second odd farm. With two champions doing damage, really. That's all that's happening. Two champions. So that time we got a free mil and another 2.4. Bam, 14 seconds. So you can see like the power of Royal Guard against Spiderlings there uh, is, is obscene. Uh, and the difference between the two Royal Guards there, the one that did the four mil had Helm Smasher as his masteries. The one that did the 2.6 has got the flawless execution. So it's burst damage versus consistent damage. Um, if we're running that same type of champion in Spider, I would do something like this. Double Royal Guards. This used to be my team. I've got a slightly quicker team now. But I used to run Draco, Slow Kaimar for a reset. Find them, Slow Kaimar. And you used to run a team like this. I could run it like this as well, but I don't want. I've got one of my Royal Guards not at 100% crit rate, so I need the Bad L crit rate boost as the lead. But we basically go here, damage increase, drop defense and weaken, slam one, slam two, onto wave two. Basically wait for the reset from Kaimar, which happens now. Poison, decrease defense, weaken, slam, slam. Onto the boss. And you're kind of just waiting to cycle back through your abilities. Always waiting to cycle the abilities. And providing decreased defense is on, we'll get the slams down as quick as we can. So even just the A1's doing like 70k damage there on an A1. Pretty nuts. Loads of poison from Draco. Obviously my, my Royal Guards are built so weak that they can't really take a hit. Um, but the next time we get a proper slam off like this, should be dead. Bam, 50 seconds consistent over and over again so that's an end game royal guard very cool pretty much one of the most fun and re like rewarding champions you can get in the game so look guys this video has been pretty long um he plays the same as that in faction wars as well it's very cool uh hope you've enjoyed the video hope you've got something out of it maybe not just how to build your royal guard but how to build a cold heart a royal guard a husk they all get built in a similar sort of way um i've been hell hades I'll catch you later.